Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Daniel Missionary Baptist Church located morning. here in Tuskegee, Alabama. Come on, let's bless the Lord this morning. If you got hands, let's come together. Let's bless the Lord. Let us the devil know that God is bigger, bigger and greater and more powerful than anything that he can send our way. And today we give him glory, we give him honor, and we give God praise in this house. Psalms 146, 47, and 48. I think all those divisions start off by saying praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I mean, back to back to back. They say Hallelujah. praise, give praise to God. So today we give praise to God over everything, everything. We give him thanks and praise. Once again, we thank you all for joining us, those that are physically here in the building, and for those who are viewing us via Facebook Live or YouTube later on today. Once again, we welcome you. We yes, say God so bless God. you. And it's our prayer that today thank you, that God will be lifted up and Lord, that God. he will speak directly into your heart, into your mind, into your situation, yes, and that you will go forth and that you will fulfill the purpose and destiny that God has for you individually to do here in this earth. Let us go before God in prayer. Father God, you are so mighty. God, you are so awesome. God, today we choose to give you praise. We choose to give you glory. We choose to lift you up, Lord. Father, we thank you for who you are. We thank you for how you have watched over us and kept us this week. Amen. Father, we ask that at this time that you would forgive us, Lord God, of any sins that we have done or committed against you. Forgive us, God. Amen. Cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And Father, we pray, Lord God, that at this moment in time, that Father God, your anointing will be present. Yes, that in the songs that we sing, in the preached word that will come forth, that you will be glorified. We ask that you will speak to our hearts, that you will Amen. speak to our minds, Lord. We pray that you will equip us to go forth to be the light and the salt, the ambassadors that you desire for us to be in this earth. Amen. Let us, Father God, go forth to make you known and to serve you well. Amen. Father, we pray for those who don't know you. Father, the laws, Lord, we pray that on this day, Lord God, that they will know that they are in need of a savior. Yes, oh God. So Father God, we pray whatever distractors, whatever blinders, whatever hindrances, whatever will keep them yoked, bound and chained, Lord God, to the devil, we pray that it will be destroyed, will be broken now in the name of Jesus. We pray, Father God, that those, those yokes and those bands, Lord God, that it will be loose from them and that they will be set free and that they will accept Jesus as their Lord and savior. Father, we pray, Lord God, that you will get the glory and all the honor and all the praise. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Before we have our worship songs this morning, we do have some announcements. Uh, first and foremost, we want to start off with our birthdays for the month of December. Um, for this month, we do have in memory of Deacon Wilson Moore and um, in memory of Deacon Edison Smith, whose um, earthly birthday was the 21st and their other birthday was the 12th for Deacon and Wilson Moore. So we do start off by just giving a remembrance of those two individuals. Amen. Also on December the 4th, um, we have uh, Jeremiah Torp celebrating his birthday. On December the 7th, we have Faith Torbert celebrating her birthday. December the 9th, we have Michael Torbert celebrating um, his birthday. And also on December the 20th, we have Sister Samara Osborne will be celebrating her birthday. And um, we have, um, we just praise God for the birthdays that we have for the month of December. Also for announcements on the third Sunday in January at 2 o'clock p.m., at Mount Esther AME Zion Church, um, located in Auburn, Alabama, our very own Sister Linda Moore has been asked to represent the Book of Haggai uh, at their 66 Books of the Bible program. Once again, that's the 66 Books of the Bible program. Our um, very own Sister Linda um, Moore Amen. will be representing the Book of Haggai at that program on the third Sunday in January at 2 o'clock p.m. Also in December, uh, we want to, I'm sorry, in January, um, Sister Gresham, help me out. I believe that is the second Saturday. Uh, well, it's the Saturday before the third Sunday. 
Okay, I know that um, her, the Clark brothers will be celebrating their 40th anniversary. Amen. And they're asking all those who are able to, to come out on that Saturday and that Sunday um, to celebrate with them. Um, please check your um, your social media websites if you have that. I know announcement will be on um, site for the Clark brothers. Uh, probably on Facebook and probably YouTube, those announcements, and also for the 66th book of the Bible, we will post that on our Daniel website. Praise God. Praise Amen. God. At this time, we're going to turn the service over to our Ministry of Music. Amen.
Amen. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. How are you all doing this morning? Good. Glory to God. Glory to God. I thank you all so much for blessing us with a minute of song this morning. Yes. It's always, always good to be in the house of the Lord, praising God with every breath. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. I'm so Amen. thankful that a rock don't have to cry out on my behalf. Glory to God. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Mm -hmm. Glory to God. Y'all know last week I was in pain. I'm still in pain. My back it ain't bad as it was, but glory be to God, I can still praise God in the midst of pain. Yes. Glory to God. Yes. He allowed us, God, glory to God. Thank you all so much for praying with us. Uh, we were able to fly to Las Vegas with my daughter last Wednesday and made that late last night in pain. But God still made a way. Glory to God. I wonder how in the world am I going to get in the airplane, sit in the seat for four hours. But God made a way. Lifting suitcases. Yeah. Going up and down stairs. He made a way. Oh, yeah. Glory to God. If you trust him, he yes, ma'am. Hey, hallelujah. Amen. And when I walk around Long Vegas Strip for me, I stayed in my room the whole time. Yeah. So my co said, You was in Long Vegas. I just don't see you in Las Vegas. I said, You Las Vegas didn't see me. <laughs> I was there. Glory to God. Amen. 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 I tend to my bed and I lay to work and read my Bible. Pray. Only time I came out that room, it was time to go get something to eat. I went right back. Mm -hmm. Glory to God. But we thank God for your prayers and uh, the prayers uh, for our travel and just praying for one another. Amen. That's what we're supposed to do as the body of Christ, as believers. Love one another unconditionally, praying for one another, singing songs, spiritual hymns, and songs to build each other up in our most holy faith. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. Uh, there's, there's a couple more announcements I forgot to let my wife know. Um, we know last uh, Tuesday we did not have prayer. I hate missing prayer. We just found out that this coming Tuesday, our daughter Faith, our uh, fifth grader, she will be. She has been asked to uh, say the what is the pledge, the pledge of allegiance. Where is it going to be? at the Oklahoma Municipal Courthouse. It's at 6 o'clock. Right. So I gotta ask you all to forgive me again. But I wanna support our children as often as we can. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Glory yeah. to God. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Now I will let you know now. Yeah. Then Joshua, after the Tuesday after that, has a concert. He just, the whole, my wife tells me the whole month of December, on a Tuesday, that our children are doing something. All right. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So I want you all, even though we're not having prayer, maybe through the month of December, please let everyone know. Call, make phone calls. Let people know we're going to try to see if we get an announcement put on there so if somebody does call in, they will know. But I ask if you're able to, even during that time in your private time, mm -hmm. to continue to still pray. Prayer is the catalyst. It is the vehicle that the church bring up. That's how we commune with our Heavenly Father. Amen. 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 Prayer is the catalyst that makes preaching easy. Everything that we do, it makes it easy because God equips us through prayer. Amen. 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 So um, please keep these announcements in mind. And if you are ready for the words, if you have your Bible, we're going to read from two scriptures today. Matthew chapter 5, we're going to read verses 6. It's Matthew chapter 5, verse 6. It's over in the, new Be uh, in the Beatitudes. And then if you can mark your place in uh, 1 John chapter 2, verse 15 through 17. Matthew chapter 5, verse 6, and then we're going to turn over to 1 John chapter 2. Amen. All right, one more time. Matthew chapter 5, verse 6 says, Blessed. 
are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. One more time, Matthew chapter 6 says, five, Matthew chapter 5 verse 6 says, blessed are those who are hungry and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. 1 John chapter 2, verse 15 through 17 says, Do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Amen. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father. Listen to that now. But is of the world. Verse 17 says, and the world is passing away and the lust of it. But he who does the will of God abides forever. Amen to the reading of God's word. The title of today's message is Desire God more than anything. Desire God more than anything. Matthew chapter 5 verse 6 says, blessed are those who hunger. How many of you, either in the building, on YouTube, or Facebook, has ever been hungry? Nobody's raising their hand. Oh, some people in the back. Amen. I'm always turning around and turn around this time. It says, blessed are those who hunger and thirst. Does it say for this world? No, it says, blessed are those who are hungry and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. We know when our bodies get tired and our stomach start to rumble, then we can go to the refrigerator, go to a drive through nowadays most time. Used to be when it's sustainable drive through for us, whatever your parents sit on the table, that's what you eat. We didn't have options. We didn't tell your mama, I don't want that. I don't need that. You may find yourself getting a bottle of floor somewhere or going to bed hungry. Because when my parents, they didn't cook a second meal. Mm -hmm. They didn't do short order cook. They didn't give up and say, well, you know what? We're just going to go through a drive-thru. Mm -hmm. Whatever we had, that's what we had. Amen. Mm -hmm. I'm not being hey, I'm not being me. I'm just telling you the truth. That's just how it was. Kids, now they didn't have options. Amen. Too many. <laughs> I don't eat that. I don't want that. That makes me sick. This put a, there you go, that put a bubble on my stomach. <laughs> Come on now, y'all know I'm telling the truth. Yeah, yeah. Because they have gotten used, and then sometimes they see the other friends. Mm -hmm. When we were living in Texas, my nephew stayed with us, he can laugh about this now. We will put, uh, we'll put money on his lunch account. And I said, how in the world on his lunch account? We just put, you know, lunch is a couple of dollars, and all back then was $1.75. And I had to count all the way He said, I need some more money. Mm -hmm. So I kept putting money on there. And so finally, I said, I called up to the school. I said, how is he eating? So they pulled the account. I said, you know you can go check it online now. So they gave me an account. I went checking online. I'm seeing Pizza Hut, Chick-fil-A. Uh -huh. See, back in Texas back then, hey, they had options. Uh -huh. You could eat the regular lunch for $1.75. Or they had Chick-fil-A, they had McDonald's, they had Pizza Hut. Hey, he was spending his money on the good stuff. Uh -huh. Why? Because his friends were doing it. Amen. He didn't want to be left out. That's right. But I had to put a stop to that. I put a block on that account and say, only the, only the lunch for a dollar seventy five. <laughs> <laughs> Where am I going with this? Okay. That's true. The Bible in Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2 says, I beseech you, dear brethren, it's by the mercies of God. That's Paul talking to the church. 
He says, do not be conformed to the things of this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. So that goes along with this verse. Blessed are those who are hungry. Hungry for what? Hungry for the word of God. See, we have been filled by the world standard, by the world way of doing things. We have eaten till our bodies have gotten content. Look at me. Glory to God. Mm -hmm. Move back out of Texas. I was like, when I move back home to all this good southern cooking. Mm -hmm. Hey, what can you deny? Mm -hmm. But God is calling, first of all, he is calling us to deny our say of the Bible said, blessed are those who thirst and hunger or hunger and thirst after his righteousness. God is telling his church, I need you to pull, come to full circle. I need you to be hungry for me. I need you to desire me more than anything on this earth. See, the things of this earth has gotten us entangled in the ways of this world. Amen. The way the world does things. The way the system does things. God never intended for his children to get entangled into the things of this world. But he always wanted us to be hungry and thirsty after his righteousness. From a little child, he always wanted the very best for us. And the very best is his word, his son, Jesus. Amen. He's always wanted the very, even right now, in the midst of what we're facing and going through, God is sounding an alarm of a Second Chronicles chapter 7 and 14 alarm that my people which are called by name will humble themselves and pray return from their wicked ways, God will hear from heaven and heal our land. He wants us to starve ourselves, this flesh, of the desires of it so we can thirst and hunger after him. Temporary food, the food of this world, is going to only go so far. But God's word is eternal. It is the life-bearing word. It is alive. It's active. It's sharper than any two-double-edged sword. It is your road map to glory. Yes. It is your road map to how to live a holy and righteous life before God. That's what it says. Blessed are those who are hungry and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. Mm -hmm. But what has happened is we have got so used to the things of this world, we are so full of things in the world, we have become numb to when God is speaking to us that it hinders our walk yeah. with him. Yeah. Yeah. We talked about this in Sunday school. So what happens is when we become lovers of this world and not lovers of God, when God wants us to do something, we can't do it. Why? Because the things of this world is talking to us louder than God is. Because God is never going to force us to do anything. He will ask us to do it. His word tells us what to do. But it's up to us to do it. Amen. Well, if God wanted us to do something, why he just didn't make us do it? That's why he gave us free will. He did not make us robots. He gave us a choice to make. He wants us to make a choice now to hunger and thirst after his righteousness or hunger and thirst after the things of this world. Now, we're going to go ahead to 1 John chapter 2. And I don't know how we missed this. But it says, do not love the world or the things in the world. That's what the Bible says. That's what Jesus is saying in his word through the apostle John. Do not love the world or the things in the world. Listen to this. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. That's horrible. Mm -hmm. He's saying, and it's plain and simple. You don't have to have an extra G's or broken down to you. He said, if you love this world, the things of this world, this world system, the love of a father is not in you. Mm -hmm. That's why we can't display the true agape love of God because we still have ties and love for this world. I'm not just talking about, I'm talking to myself as well. 
Even when I was on this trip, the Lord was pointing things out. Keep there's things in your life that is not dead. I need it dead so I can move forward and do what I need to do in your life. If I ask you to do something, you struggle with doing it because you still got a stronghold in this world. Let it die. And the only way we're going to let it die is to be obedient unto God. Allow his word. Like I said in John chapter 15 verse 3, it says we are cleansed because of his word. We have to feast on his word. The Bible says, blessed are those who are hungry. If you are hungry, eat this word. Read this word. Allow it to get on the inside of you. And the Holy Spirit of God will let it explode on the inside of you like dynamite. That the word of God can become alive on the inside of you. So when people see you. They see the truth of God's word. So when you stay in God's word, you read his word, you allow his word to apply in you. When somebody comes to you and asks you a question, you will know how to answer them. The Bible said, be ready to give a defense for the gospel say at all times. Don't say, let me uh, wait, come to church with me on Sunday. You'll get the answer Sunday. No, God wants you to have the answer for somebody now. They may not make it to church on Sunday. Amen. You are the church. Glory to God. That's a blessed thing. We are the houses, the keepers of God's word that lives on the inside of us. But he is saying no longer, it, never, it was never intended for us to be lovers of this world. Verse 16 says, for all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the things that we desire to do, more than spending time with God, more than reading God. I've been there. I know when your favorite TV show is on and God is knocking at the heart of your door, come pray with me. Come spend time and come read your word. Now, oh God, the, the championship game is on. Hey, let you and Georgia are playing. I ain't got time right now. I got to watch these games. I'll catch up with you later. Come on now. My favorite soap opera on. It's at the climax of part of the soap. I've been waiting on this all year. I can't miss this right now. But you need a blessing from God. Yeah. Yeah. That's what happens when we get entangled in the affairs of this world. We'll put God on the back burner because our desire is to do the will of the flesh. Uh -huh. We were never designed, Adam and Eve in the garden was never designed uh, to desire the things of this world. They had an opportunity to say no, but they didn't. They took it and look at the mess we're in right now. Uh -huh. But God said the answer. Through one man, sin in through one man, the righteousness of God has come through Jesus. Yes. Jesus came to set the ultimate example. Jesus, when he came, he did not care about this world system. He didn't care about the things of this world. The Bible said that Jesus came to do the will of his father, and that's exactly what he did. Yes. He didn't speak one word out of his mouth unless his father told him to. He didn't do one act unless he saw the Father do it. And that is how we are supposed to live. But because we have gotten entangled in the things of this world and our life has become a mess, come on now, somebody know what I'm talking about. Now God got to get us untangled. He got to break these chains. He got to get us delivered from the cares of this life and of this world so we can love not this world, but we can love him, love him and be hurt, thirsty and hungry after his righteousness. We got to love God above all else. When we love God, and he turns upside down, I'll pray him on the I said, God, turn us upside like a salt shaker and shake everything that's not like you out of us and then set us on the solid rock of Christ and fill us with your spirit and destroy the works of this flesh. Jesus already did it on the cross, but we got to believe it. Church, do we really believe that Jesus has the power to save, to deliver us, to destroy this flesh? Do you really believe it? Do you really believe it? I shared this in Sunday school when we was in Las Vegas. On my phone, and that happens everywhere. I was just so amazed. Seven and eight uh, pop up on my phone. Uh, you know, killings, all manner of things are happening. But God's, where is the church where all this is going on? Where's my church? People are saying, where is God? God is saying, where is my church? 
I empowered you. I gave you my love. I gave you my son. My son gave you his spirit. He has empowered you. You have all the gifts of the spirit. You have the ninefold gift, the ministry gifts. But what are you doing with the gifts in the earth? We was reading the Sunday school, Matthew chapter 9, miracle after miracle after miracle. Jesus was training his disciples. The disciples were right there learning on the job training. And that's what we're supposed to be in the church, on the job training. God never intended for us to sit on the pew, to be in the church all our life. He intended for us to come and be disciples, the word of God to come alive on the inside of us, not to love the care of this life, but to go out into the world. And be the light of men, to be fishers of men, yeah. not lovers of ourselves. Amen. That's what God created us to be. That's why He said, Do not love the things of this world. Because when we love the things of this world, then you can't tell a Christian from somebody that's in the world. Amen. I'm not being funny. How many people on our job know that we love Jesus? Mm -hmm. How many people that we sit by on airplanes and buses know we love God? How many of our classmates know that we love Jesus? I'm not being mean. These are questions that were asked of me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But we're supposed to be the church. Amen. I asked this question in Sunday. Yeah, I'm going to continue to ask these same questions. I said, how many of you ever been to an immersion room? Has anybody ever been to an immersion room and it was empty? I've never been to an immersion room. It's never been empty. It's always been full. You got to wait four, six, sometimes ten hours. Or sometimes you got to go to another hospital. But see, the church is supposed to be the same way. Every instance over Matthew chapter 9 and other instances of the Bible, they thronged Jesus wherever he was. Why? Because he had something they needed. He had life. That same life-bearing spirit he has given us, the same spirit that has raised Jesus from the dead, he has given it to his church so the door should be busting open, people should be coming in. Jesus, where are you, son of David? Have mercy on us. But they should be seeing Jesus in us. They didn't come to see me. They come to see Jesus where they should. We should be welcoming drug addicts, mm -hmm. prostitutes, mm -hmm. pimps, mm -hmm. murderers, all these kind of things, because Jesus did. Mm -hmm. So he had no love for the world, but he had compassion for these people because they were lost without a shepherd. Mm -hmm. He know that end from the beginning. He know that the thing that the world has characterized them to be is not who they really are. He created them with destiny. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He created each one of you with destiny. But we got to get to the point where we say, Father, you need to go into your own private closet, and I'm almost done, and, and repent. Say, Father, I have loved the things of this world more than I have loved you. Mm -hmm. I have entangled myself in the cares of this life, things of this life, more than I loved you. Mm -hmm. I have done things that was not of your character. I have walked in darkness, not in light. See, this is how a child can talk to their parents. Dad, I did this. I did it. I'm not proud of it, but I did it. But I'm, I know this is not who you created for me to be. Jesus came and paid a high price for your life. He came. He died. He was brutally, he did that. He was brutally murdered. For each one of you. He lived the ultimate example. He did not care about the cares of his life. Matter of fact, he told the religious people. He told them. He didn't care about his system. He didn't care about being famous. He didn't care about wearing kingly or tie and robes and all these kind of things. Look who I am. The Bible said Jesus was lowly. It didn't mean he was broke. I mean, he came, he was humbled mm -hmm. before God. He was humble before people. He can associate himself with the people. Amen. He called Matthew a tax collector, a robber, stealing people money. Mm -hmm. And the Pharisee walking around, why your master eat with sinners and publicans? Mm -hmm. That's who he came for. Mm -hmm. And if you knew the word of God, you should have known that. Amen. You religious demons. 
studies of the law, studies of the word of God. Knowing the word, knowing the power of God, but denying the truth. Those same religious spirits are in operation today. They want to, they are sent to hinder the church. They are sent to, to get us to be in a comfortable place. To care about ourselves, to care about the ways of this life, to care about the things of this world, instead of caring about the will of God. That last verse is uh, 1 John chapter 2, verse 17, and the world is passing away, which is passing away right now because the lust of the flesh. The lust of this time, the lust of this age. But it says, but he who does the will of God abides forever. I'm telling you, get before God. Do what I told you to do. Allow him to shine a, a, a spiritual flashlight, a light on the inside of you. So he, he's already speaking to I know because if he's speaking to me, he's speaking to you. He's been as you remove these things out of your life. So you can serve him wholeheartedly and not be torn between two. Amen. The person that you work with, the person that you go to school with, the person, the person that you ride the bus with, Uber with, they could be on their last leg and they need a word from God and you are the word barrier. Amen. If God tells you to speak, you speak because Jesus did it. His apostles did it. His disciples did it. And he is calling his church to be a light in the earth. To be a the salt in the earth. To stand for him when nobody else will. People's lives are depending on it. It ain't none of my business. I don't get in for business. God got in the middle of your business and brought you out. Allow him to use you to bring somebody else out. Desire God more than anything in this earth. Watch what God do in your life, in the life of your family. Your family is depending on you. Your friends are depending on you. God is depending on you. I'm not guilt tripping. I'm telling you the truth. And you'll find out more about the will of God as you study and read his word. Study it. Eat it. Read it. Thirst out. Home out it, and God will fill you. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you so much for your word, oh God. Holy Spirit, give us a spiritual hunger and thirst after the righteousness of God that we may be filled. God, show us who we really are in you, oh God. Father, let the anointing of the Holy Spirit destroy the yoke of bondage in our life. Let us sever every dead relationship, every lust of the flesh, the pride of life in our life, oh God. Everything that we are attached to in this world, everything that we love more than you will be separated, that we can be brought unto you, oh God. It's like in the time of old, that people of God, they got on their face and their knees and they put uh, ashes and sackcloth on their head and they fasted before you, oh God. Until you forgave them and you delivered them and you put them back in the place they needed to be. That's where we as the church need to be, oh God. Father, we repent for loving this world more than we love you, Lord. We repent and ask you to forgive us, oh God. You said in your word, if we repent, we will turn away from our evil way that you will heal from heaven and heal our land, oh God. This is a desperate cry. We're not pointing fingers at no one person, oh God. We all have fallen short of the glory of God. But we are all coming to you as one right now, as Moses and Nehemiah and other men of God and women of God stood in the gap for the children of Israel. We are standing in the gap for your church universally, oh God. No one man, no one woman can do all things, oh God. But you have given many gifts to many members, a part of one body. In Christ, you are the head. We need you to come and invade our hearts, heaven. Invade us. Invade our life, oh God. Everything that's in us is not of you. Let it be burned away, oh God. And fill us with your glory. Fill us with your power. Fill us with your perfect love that casts out all fear. That we will not be afraid to go where you will send us to go, oh God. We need you, God, to come. Holy Spirit. 
let a fresh anointing be poured on us. Let us receive that anointing today, oh God. Let us see, receive the power of God that will cause us to walk on water, to believe, only believe that we can do all things through Christ Jesus who gives us the strength. Father, we just pray for our loved ones, wherever they are. Lord, we got members that are sick at home in the bed. They can't get up. And there's the desire to get up and come to the household of faith, oh God. And we ask and we cry all that they have, that by Jesus' stripes, that they are healed, set free, and delivered, oh God. Father, maybe some out there are contemplating suicide. We ask you to break that spirit in the heavenly, that they may be loose in the name of Jesus, oh God. And they see that their life is worth living through Jesus Christ. Father, maybe some out there were financial destitutes, oh God. If you don't show up, they're not going to make it, oh God. If you don't provide, they're not going to have, oh God. We ask you to open up the windows of heaven and pour them out blessings they don't even have room enough to receive. And that you get the glory out of their life, oh God. Father, we ask you to hold the church in the palm of your hand as only you can. And shape us and make us and mold us to be the people of God you created us to be in the earth. That we can be the true, authentic believers. Believing in our hearts that we can do all things through Christ Jesus. That we can do whatever that you have told us that we can do because you can do it through us, oh God. We thank you so much, Jesus. Holy Spirit, help us to apply this word in our life. Wreck us, oh God, that we will never be the same. It's in Jesus Christ's name we pray and give thanks. Amen. 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 Jesus Christ is born. He died, but he lives. His life is everlasting. He's our eternal hope and glory. If somebody's out there listening today, Jesus, there's only one way to the Father, 
and that's through Jesus. He has created for us an eternal home in his kingdom. That's why we, the church, exist. To share the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. That those that call upon the name of the Lord Jesus will be saved and have an eternal home in his kingdom. Why do you think the uh, uh, deacon Stephen, when he, we talk about over in Acts chapter 7, preaching the gospel, sharing the good news of the gospel, but being stoned at the same time. And he said, Lord Jesus, don't charge this to them. Forgive them. And the Bible said the heavens were open. And Stephen saw Jesus sitting at the right hand side of the Father. And God received Stephen unto himself. That's the church. He gave his life for the church. Jesus gave his life for the church. The apostles gave their life for the church. And we are supposed to follow in suit in line to give our lives for the church so the church can be a blessing to somebody else. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Jesus died for this entire world. He didn't want any to be lost. It's his creation. He created us. Hallelujah. Amen. We thank God for his word today. I pray that you have truly been blessed. I know these words are cooking. It cooks me, but so that's what the word of God is supposed to do. It's supposed to bring reproach. It's supposed to bring correction, but then bring us into a place of unity with God. It's supposed to push us mm -hmm. until we get to the place we need to be in him. Hallelujah. Amen. I love each and every one of you. We pray that you all have a blessed week this week and that the Lord Jesus will shine upon you wherever you go that you will be a walking Bible. Some of you may be the only Bible that other people may see or know. So make sure you're on with your word. Amen. 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 Father, we thank you so much. We love you. We thank you what our ears have heard, our eyes have seen. Oh God, open our eyes, ears, and heart that we may understand what you are saying. Let us tell somebody, let us tell everybody that Jesus Christ, he was born he lived, he died, he was buried in a borrowed tomb, he was raised from the dead, now sit at your right hand, waiting for you to say, go get him, bring my children back home. So we thank you, Lord God. We magnify your name. Give us the grace to stand for you when nobody else will. Let us make it to our various destinations safe, sound, and on time, and safely, oh God. We pray for our brothers and sisters that may be far in there, whatever they're facing and going through. We got a team that's preparing to go to Kenya, Africa, nation, your Lord. Two weeks ministry to your people in kingdom. Father, provide. Go ahead of them. Set the house in order for when they get there, oh God. We ask you to do it, Father. It's in Jesus Christ's name that we pray and give thanks. And we all said amen. 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 amen.